So I did a thing. And we're back, Adventure Blur here. So I was at Supercon not too long ago, and while I was there, I got a great haul. So of course, I'm making a video about it, because I can. And I got the Master Sword. How could I not make a video on all this stuff, guys? So let's get started. So I don't know how I can start this video off without mentioning this. I bought the Master Sword replica that was there. They had three versions of it. They had this one, a like medium sized one, and then this a giant like broadsword that was the Master Sword. And I saw this one last year, and I was really interested in getting it, and I always bought it, but I didn't because of money. But this year I had enough money for it, and it was still there, still a great price, and I just had to do it. Just because uh, I just love the Zelda series. And like, as a Zelda fan, how could you not buy this, you know? And the scabbard itself, it's not that accurate to any other ones from the games. It just isn't. But the sword itself is like, I would say 90% accurate. The main weakness when it comes to like the design is the blade itself. The blade, you can tell instantly that it's a little off compared to the video game counterpart that it's trying to be. And the hilt's a little off too. Like the hilt, there's meant to be a little thing right here that's not there. But outside of those two things, I couldn't find any major differences. Like, it's pretty accurate. And for the price, it was like 40 bucks. So for the price, it was easily worth it. I'm planning on putting this up in my game room. So you'll probably be seeing this in videos soon. I'm just, I'm in awe about owning this. You know, like every Zelda fan dreams of actually wielding the Master Sword or owning the Master Sword. And I technically do. I don't know if I could be able to, you know, kill Ganon with it, but, I mean, I could try. If Ganon was real and all. Maybe, maybe they can work that out in a couple of years. Make that happen. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this anymore. I'm just rambling now, but... Yeah. Now I'm just going to go through things pretty much one at a time, because now I just got a whole stack of stuff. So, probably one of the last things I bought at Supercon, but I'm doing it kind of early because it was right there and I could easily grab it, was the Rogue One, a Star Wars story comic adaption of the movie. I love Rogue One, one of my favorite Star Wars movies ever. And you guys already know how much I love Star Wars. So when I saw this for like five bucks, yeah, I did it. I mean, I just love Rogue One, and I love the movie, I love the characters, and from everything I've heard about the comic adaption and the books and all this stuff about it, it adds in a lot of, like, deleted scenes from the movie into the story. It's like there's a lot of, like, cut scenes that were originally going to be in the movie but weren't that are in the comic adaption. And, like, I already read Catalyst recently, and I love that, so I'm kind of in a Rogue One mood. And plus, I'm rewatching Star Wars Rebels, so that also helps. So, yeah, I, I had to do this, and I am excited to go through it. Next up is a box that, if you you know noticed, you probably could already tell what it is. But if you haven't, now it's a reveal. The Song of the Deep, Marin and her submarine Funko Pop. I love Song of the Deep. That was. It's the hidden gem of the PlayStation 4, in my opinion. Because as someone who does not like Metroidvania games, it got me into it. Into like, that entire genre. There is something special about that game. From the art style, to the music, to just the story, and the gameplay, of course. And I just love that game. I'm planning on, you know, starting to collect stuff from it. But yeah, this is probably going to be the start of a Song of the Deep collection. And I'm okay with that. This is also my very first of the like larger Funko Pops. I normally just get like the regular ones, so yeah, it's gonna be fun. So let's unbox it. Luckily, it was already open before. Don't worry, I did not do it on well, the record show. I didn't. I bought it used there, but for the price, I mean, it was worth it. 
and it's just spell. It's a felony error. And I'm putting the box aside. Even though I really like the box. I get credit where it's due. I really like the box. But here we have it. Marin and the submarine. And I just adore it. Like just the details on it. Like this thing was used, so like there's a little things. It's actually really dusty too. That's that's nice. I have a hunch this was in the warehouse for a while, but I can wipe this. I can wipe it down. You know, that's fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? But yeah, it's just very well done. And like, the details are great. Again, I just love the game. So this is something I'm excited to have on my shelf. So yeah, this is like... It's getting a wipe down. It's getting a wipe down, but I have to own it. And I'm putting it right there, because it looks cool, like right, right there. And if you haven't played Song of the Deep, I am putting a link to it in the description so you can try it out. It's amazing, trust me. Seriously, it's one of the best games I've played in a while. Check it out. Up next, I have pretty much three games that I got there, and the only three games I bought there. What was cool about it was that the place I bought them, like the whole like vendor that I bought them from, had a deal that was buy two games, get one free. And all the games were $15 each. And they were all Japan imports. So I got some pretty cool ones. First off, I have The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons for the Game Boy Color. This is my favorite of the Oracle games, easily. And I've actually never finished either of the Oracle games, so, you know, maybe this will get me into trying them out again. And it's cool because I've learned this. Game Boy Color games are region free. You can play them on any system. I don't know how many people know this, but I didn't. So, the more you know. The next game I got, Sonic Riders. One of my very first Sonic games, actually. Like, it wasn't my first, it was like, but it was something up there. Like, I was, my first one was Sonic Adventure 2, Battle. But this came, I got this about the time it came out, so, I mean, if I, it was one of my first, either way. But yeah, this game is so good. And I love it, I replay it pretty regularly, the first one. I would replay the second one more, Zero Gravity, but I have the PlayStation 2 version. Not PlayStation 2, the Wii version. Yeah, because PlayStation 2 was good. I have the Wii one, so, um, not so good. But yeah, I just love this game, and for the deal, it was just, it was the first one I grabbed. I saw it and I was immediately had to get it. And it's just such a great game, and such a great, like, artwork for the cover and all of it. And I have an action replay for the GameCube. So I can actually play this on my GameCube without any modifications. I can just put in the action replay disc, then put in this disc, and play it like nothing. Like there's no issues at all. So I'm excited to try that out and see if there's any differences. So, you know, that's fun. So when I was buying the game, a group of guys there at Supercon saw, because they had two copies of Donkey Kong 64 on you know, with the box. One of them wasn't as good condition though, so I grabbed the better one. But they saw it, and immediately, word for word, did the DK rap from the game. And it was hilarious, and just perfect at the same time. I wish I recorded it, but I didn't, and I don't think anyone else did either. It was just so sudden, but it was just such a great moment, and definitely a highlight for Supercon for me. It went from a game that I was kind of unsure about whether I was going to buy or not, to by the time they were done, I was paying the guy the money for the game. You know, like, it was just such a great and fun moment. And, like, it doesn't come with everything. Like, I'll show you. It's missing a few of the manuals. It only comes with the... only comes with one manual, which is more or less the... I guess the main one, seeing as it goes over the controls and whatnot. But the cartridge and all of it is in great condition. Like... The box, the cartridge, it's all in great condition, and it's all there, just missing a manual or two, which to me, is not the end of the world. And if you don't know this, 
Japan N64 games are region locked because of the back of the cartridge. But luckily, I have the tools that I can just, you know, unscrew it and swap out the backs. All you gotta do to play a Japanese Nintendo 64 game on a US or PAL region is 64. Just swap out the backs and you're fine. I'll put the link to the tools for it in the description so you can try it yourself. I plan on doing it with this game, you know, Animal Crossing for the N64 is a goal of mine someday, and who knows what else. There's certainly a lot of good N64 games from Japan, so it's going to be fun to check those out. And now I have a reason to. This is the beginning of probably a big collection. And next, I have two car stickers. I know, kind of anticlimactic for the moment, but the video's not over yet, guys, okay? I, I gotta throw these in somewhere. I got a Sonic one because it's Sonic and how many car stickers are there for Sonic that are good. Let me rephrase that. Car stickers for Sonic that are actually good. If you actually know of any, I would totally love to know, so put that in the um, comments. Let me know. I'll be after it. And then, there was this one. I just had to do it. Because the goal of mine is to deck out my car and like Star Wars The Clone Wars you know, stickers and stuff like that. And I saw this one, and I just knew it had to happen. You know, I would vote, I don't know about you, but I would vote for General Kenobi and General Skywalker to lead America. I don't think they'll do that bad of a job. I think they'll be pretty good. Next, I have a magnet. And it's Kirby, because Kirby. You know, it makes sense, it's Kirby. And we love Kirby in the channel. I mean, we know this by now. But yeah, I just, the people there were selling a bunch of different ones. They had Mario, Pokemon, Zelda. I don't think they had any Sonic, but they had a lot of them. But I just saw the Kirby one, and I just knew if I was gonna do one, it had to be Kirby. Because just, Kirby's such a big part of the channel, you know? And I'm enjoying getting Kirby stuff, you know, like the um, Terrarium. For the last, you know, haul video, that was really fun. Like, so, more Kirby stuff. And Kirby's Adventure, come on. The best Kirby game of the ones I've played. I mean, I heard Star Allies is amazing, and I really like Triple Deluxe, but of the ones that I've played, Kirby's Adventure. It's Kirby on the adventure. What more do you want? And finally, the last thing, I didn't technically get this at Supercon, but it's something that I brought from my collection to be signed at Supercon. My copy of Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia, signed by Erica Lindbeck. Erica Lindbeck is the voice actress of Celica in the game. One well, pretty much the main character. It's her and all in the game and they're two of my favorite Fire Emblem characters in general, and maybe RPG characters in general. Like, I love those characters and the story and just everything about the game. I have yet to finish it, I'll be honest. It's on my list, so I'm like... 85% done with the game. I'm pretty close to completing it. It's just one last, you know, push and I'm done. But of what I played, I just love it, and I love the characters. And the voice acting is phenomenal for the game. One of the biggest things I love about the game is how it's done the voice acting for it. Like Awakening and Shadow Dragon, the two other Fire Emblem games I've played, had, well Shadow Dragon didn't have any voice acting. And Awakening had voice acting, and when it had it, it did an amazing job. Like the cutscenes were great. But it was just so few and far between that it felt kind of lacking at times. Echoes, on the other hand, had it consistently throughout the entire game. Every line is vo fully voice acted. And they've done an amazing job at getting the right voice actors and actresses for it. And I think Celica has one of the best voices for the entire Fire Emblem series in this game. Even though there has been many games with voice acting really, but beside the point. Erica Lindbeck was just unbelievably nice and she just did such an amazing job as Celica in the game. And I just, I love this game, and I love the characters, especially Celica and all. It was just awesome to meet her and to have a sign. 
definitely a big part of my collection now. And it's kind of cool because this is the first game I've ever actually gotten signed. Like if you remember last year, I got a Super Smash Bros. Brawl poster signed by Charles Barnett. But that was just a poster. This was the actual game case, so it's pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it, which is quite a bit. I enjoyed it a lot. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and comment below your favorite part. Share it as well so you know other people can enjoy it. And share it in some of my other videos if you want to, like other unboxings maybe. And maybe looking back at videos, they're really fun. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If, you know, if you want to, you'll probably enjoy that too. And as always, this is Adventure Blur, and I will see you next time.